Okay, it is Monday, December 19th, 2022 at 707 p.m. We'll call the Economic Development Commission meeting to order. Um, we have from the EDC, myself, Renee Deli, Kevin Snyder, and Steve Warshaw. Um, Julie is unable to make it tonight. Uh, we're going to skip around the agenda a little bit. We'll, we'll start with uh, some business updates, uh, move into the approval of meeting minutes that we have, and then um, we'll turn it over to Alyssa with Lucky Green Ladies for a presentation. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I'll ask you guys, I don't have, let me look at my notes. I don't believe that I have any um, any updates, any business updates from our last meeting, but I'm going to check. But if uh, either you, Steve, or Kevin have anything, feel free to jump in. Uh, but I got one at least. Uh, Bog Iron is going to be celebrating their 10 year anniversary, and I, I'm pretty sure they're doing it on New Year's. But that's that's who I've been talking to. I, I sat down a couple of nights uh, the past weeks and just trying to reach out, talk to a few people that are sitting around and whoever wants to talk. So it's been kind of fun to talk to all the managers. I, I talked to, um, I see Sully, I talked to Rob, I talked to one of the workers, uh, Gabby just got their uh, opinion about the business, how it's been going over 10 years. And they kind of wanted us to, if we could announce that they are having their 10 year. Sure, are, are they doing any announcements too, Steve? They're posting it online. Okay. So I think we can do that through the EDC page. That's great. Kevin, do you have any updates? Um, I do not have any updates. Okay. Um, just a quick update. I know I put it on for the agenda um, next time. I reached out to Maria, the new um, director for planning and development. Um, since I was sick last week or the week before and then ended up with COVID last week, I wasn't able to actually meet her in person, but I, I didn't want to let that stop. Um, stop the introduction. So I sent her an email. Um, she did, it was a, a great response I got back from her. She indicated she worked very closely with the EDC in her former role, and she's looking forward to, to meeting with us and doing that too. Um, she did say for our next meeting in January that she's not able to meet in person, but she can do it virtually. So we can decide if we want to do a full virtual session or um, if we want to do a hybrid. And I can reach out to North Media Center if we want to do a hybrid so that we have a better, better connectivity. Um, I think it would be fine for us because I can connect to that TV. I just don't know about the audio. So we'll see if they can provide some support if needed. But we can we can talk about that um, later on. Um, but from a business update perspective, I thought that was good. So we can you know move forward, have some discussion tonight on our third agenda item for the uh, master plan action items, and then have a, a more detailed discussion with Maria on what her goals are and some of the priorities and, and see how we align. <clears throat> but she she seems like a, a great person and um, like she'll be a great partner for us. So I'm looking forward to us meeting with her and, and working with her. I'm just checking to see if I have any other notes. Oh, I also met um, in respect to businesses. If you remember the last meeting, we talked about Parks and Rec and having some collaboration with them and whether or not um, there were shared lists between the, the planning department and Parks and Rec in respect to contact lists for the, the companies in town. Um, so I spoke to the chair of, uh, of the committee and they are more than willing to, to get together for a joint meeting or, or if just one of their folks wanna come and attend and we can talk about um, some symmetries that we have too. So get some, get some okay. uh, partnership with them as well. Um, I, I uh, casually met uh, Ms. DeVoe also. The other oh, night. good. So that's, that's a little bit of familiarity. Is that the other night at a meeting or at Santa's thing? At Bog Iron. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> we'll just call that preparation for the uh, 10 year anniversary. I can't right. believe it's been 10 years. Yeah, right. It's a long time. Man, yeah, that makes me feel old. Um, you know what? I just remembered I was supposed to do some homework and I didn't. So I will, um, I'll get on this. Um, tomorrow but uh i was supposed to reach out to the um the uh tri-town chamber of commerce okay. about talking to them about about partnering um on you know trying to get a business organization together so um so i get an f for that 
<laughs> no, actually, so, but, you get a you get a pass for that, Kevin, because if you look at our future meeting topics, number six mm -hmm. is your Tritown Chamber of Commerce update. Perfect. So, so I will have it ready for the. I will at least have something for the next meeting. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. If if you don't, just let us know and we'll move it. I mean, I just listed these. I didn't want to lose sight of anything that we had been talking about to have on the agenda. So our future meeting topics is getting long, but um, I wanted to make sure we had a, a short and concise concise meeting. Yeah. for today so yeah and i and i i know um uh i know nick has been busy with some other stuff going on in town nick ifrady so mm -hmm. uh, uh you know i know he's working on putting together something on the vacant properties thing so that we'll see if he has something for the next meeting but i know he's been tied up with some stuff so okay <laughs> if he doesn't that's okay because we're gonna meet with excuse me we're gonna meet with maria so that'll probably yep. be the majority of our meeting so no no rush there with the holidays and stuff coming up. Okay, great. Um, anything else? As, well, how uh, are we discussing the master plan or just general business so far? Uh, just just business updates for right now. That's it that I got for around town. Okay. So why don't we um, let's switch, go out of order, and uh, jump to the approval of meeting minutes. Um, for my record, I have four minutes that were sent to the group. Um, we have the, the meeting minutes from the uh, Marijuana Retailer Subcommittee from September 10th of uh, 2020. Um, and then we have the meeting minutes from the summer, June 29th, 2022, and then two from our most recent meeting, November 14th and November 28th, 2022. Um, did you guys, before we before I ask for a motion, did you guys have an opportunity to re review these and are you comfortable approving tonight? Uh to be honest, I did not see the 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 oldest one, but I, I am familiar with our most recent meetings. Okay. Oh no, it um you didn't see the meeting minutes or you didn't see the meeting? The meeting minutes from the 20, 19, uh, 2020. Okay. So do you wanna you wanna table that one until next time just so you can review them? And you don't have sure. to. We've we've had conversations with um council on this, Steve, about if you had to be a member at the time and, and you don't. It's just okay. like you know. Okay. Don't have to I mean, I don't mind. Watch, watch. I don't mind approving. We can review whatever we need to review forward. Yeah. Yep. No, that's fine. Okay. okay. So that was just the first one, right? The the September one. Yep. Okay. So so chair on a motion to approve the meeting minutes from June 29th, November 14th, and November 28th, 2022. Second. I, All right. I just, mo uh, I, uh, sorry. So moved. So moved. Thank you. And okay. Steve, I just Aye. need a second. Second. Okay. Um, we have to do roll call vote because we're on Zoom. So all in. Uh, so, uh, Kevin, your vote. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I too am a yes. So the um, meeting minutes for those three dates are approved. Boy, I'm out of uh, I'm out of sync with the Zoom process with the roll call <laughs> votes. <clears throat> Okay, so it's 7.15. Let me, um, can we just pause for one second? Let me just text Mike and see if he's close to coming. <clears throat> Being able to attend. I know he's probably. Um, he's probably going I don't know if he's going to attend from his office or from the road. Give me just one sec. Okay, I'll wait to see if he um, if he responds to that quickly. Let me go into. I'll do a, a quick update on this. Um, so, just uh, for the record, um, the next item that we'll talk about is Lucky Green Ladies and their marijuana retail establishment. So, just wanted to provide some a historical view on this um, as part of the um, the R five process in Norton two years ago. Uh, Alyssa was one of the applicants. Um, that came forward and was recommended from um, the EDC to present to the select board for one of the um, HCAs for a retail establishment. At the time, we only had two licenses. Um, 
and they were awarded to Solar Retail Norton and Exit 10 LLC. Um, as part of that meeting, the select board also voted um, to engage with Alyssa at such time where either one of the two retailers didn't come to fruition after two years and or we had another license that was made available in town. Um, Exit 10 LLC, their HCA um, was canceled when um, they dissolved their com company and then it was actually up to expire in November anyway. But um, at this time, the town has one active HCA with Solar Retail Norton for retail establishment and, and the other one um, by confirmation of the select board last week. Um, we have engaged with Alyssa to move forward on that second one um, for her to uh, present to us for the HCA. And what we do as part of this process, uh, just for your awareness, if you guys weren't involved, um, what I ask Alyssa to do is, is not to present to us all of the information that she did the first time around. It was quite, quite lengthy through the RF RFI process, but I asked her to focus more on what has changed from that time. So when she first presented to us, the location was at the Great Woods Plaza. Uh, that location became unavailable, and she has since found a new location that's, that's now under site control. Um, so just for... Um, clarification and, and brevity, we want to just focus on the changes so that, you know, if we have any questions about um, any of the traffic or security or floor plan or anything, we can ask that and really just um, prepare to have her move forward to be able to present to the select board and, and um, engage in HCA. <clears throat> so with that, um, I don't have a response back from Mike right now. Oh, maybe I do. Hold on. Um, he said he has 10 to 15 minutes um, before he can come. So Alyssa, I, I wanna be sensitive to your time. It's already 7.20, you wanna just go ahead and present and then we can we can update Mike later and share the, re I mean, obviously the recording is gonna be shared or do you, would you prefer that we um, delay your presentation and we can, we can move on to another part of our agenda? Yeah, yeah let's delay a little bit because just in case he has any questions. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind waiting, it, it, but I don't want to hold you up. So I just, if you have something else to talk about, you know. But oh, we do. Don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. We, do. we can fill the time. We, we usually don't have a problem with that. Yeah, that's okay. I appreciate that. And we'll just, mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll table it. Um, <clears throat> Mike has all the background since he was part of the, uh, the subcommittee during the process. So um, let me ask before we we switch over, Kevin or Steve, do you have any questions about the original process or um, what brings Alyssa to us today? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. So with that, let's uh, let's pause on our our agenda, our second agenda item. Let's move over to planning updates, and uh, we'll wait for Mike units to join. Okay. Um, I have to find my sheet. So Julie is the master behind the um, the master plan items, but uh, we did go through this at uh, one of our last meetings. So I thought maybe, at least for us, um, we kind of rank these in respect to the level of effort, the return on investment. Um, why don't we talk about what, I think how we left it last time, if I remember, and please correct me guys, is we were going to focus on one to two items initially to, to start with, and then start to identify some action items in uh, a potential timeline. Um, and this would be in accordance with uh, partnership with Maria. Um, to make sure that, you know, we're aligned on the same goals. But I think we identified a couple that were some easy wins that we could have, and then um, a couple that required more insight. So if if our recommendation comes back to be, <coughs> excuse me, two or four, I think that that's okay. We just need to make sure that we we plan out appropriately. Um, so with that, let me just, uh, let me just review these quickly. One of them we, we took off of the list. We had initially... We had 10 and we removed one that we think was inadvertently assigned to us. Um, that was not the noob or the boon one. I think it was that was it, it, broadband. It was one? the electricity and, and broadband. Yeah. 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 3.2.5. Uh, even though we, we kind of scrapped that one, I actually kind of added some, something into my uses table <laughs> that, that might address that in a manner. Okay. So we'll talk about that when we, um, do I have that on a list for discussion next time or one of the next meetings? I don't think I do. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't mind to present that soon. Okay, let me know your timeline and, and we can talk to Steve about um, best time. I'm just gonna write it down now. Okay. Just so I don't, I don't 
lose it. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let me just review these nine quickly. Um, the first one was the permitting process and guide um, that had partners with uh, Serpent <coughs> on there. And that's certainly something that we'd have to talk to Maria about in respect mm -hmm. to um, hours of time. The other one was the village center core um, to update, <coughs> excuse me, um, to update the zoning to encourage more compact development, the French street. So this one had an immediate high. I'm, I'm just going to read the uh, immediate highs for right now mm -hmm. um, in respect to the implementation priority. So there, there's a list of the actions on here. I don't have them in front of me right now, but um, just making note that there are additional action items that we could probably leverage if we decide this is one of the one of the top ones moving forward. The other one was the business organization or the Norton Organization of Businesses um, or the business organization. Yeah, it was business organization of Norton or Norton Organization of Businesses. Um, that one also was immediate high. And that was our discussion on this one. Um, was to talk more about beyond the West Main Street efforts that were happening. Um, that certainly has um, some partnerships with uh, Maria and her department, as well as the Triton Chamber of Commerce. And then obviously the stakeholders are the most important. The next one is the rail trail. So this, um, I had a note on here, it said, reach out to Chris. And I'm not sure why this note was on here, but um, this was one I think that we talked about um, it was from a, an effort perspective, it, it wasn't super high, uh, but the return on investment could be high. Um, timing, um, I believe Mike said at the last meeting, um, Kevin or Steve at the last select board meeting that it's end, end of the rail trail was slated for end of 2024. Is that um, right? I thought it was spring of 2025. Okay. 2025 is sticking out in my mind that it would be completed. Okay. And then when you said Chris, did you mean Chris Zahner? I don't know. That was why I think it was Chris Zahner. This were, yeah, was, I think we, we might have been talking, Chris... talking oh, about health, like um, trying to remember what, what that conversation was about. But I know. It, I, I didn't leave myself good notes to understand. Steve, do you remember on that one? I I'm, I have no idea yet about okay. who's who who um really supposed to be uh, communicating with on the rail trail, other than like the <laughs> alternative transportation committee. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, and I, I had I, two. Yeah, I'm gonna go have ahead. to actually go attend one of their meetings. I started mapping it out myself, <laughs> and um, you know, I'm gonna have to cross reference with everybody, get more input about it, but uh. Yeah, I started looking at the properties around the trail, what's immediately touching, and uh, what recreations in the area, how we can connect it to the other trails. Uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities to link it up, especially through several parcels of town land uh, that would connect it to other networks of trails, and that would that would probably uh, enhance how many people are going to end up using it. Okay. And you know what, as you were talking, Steve, I think I think the reference to Chris was also had to do with the mobile um, mobile trucks, mobile food service. Okay. I think that's why he was on there, right? Because we were talking about, like, I don't think we actually said brick and mortar, but we were talking about, could we have um, businesses located there? But it's not, you know, the way that we we're, do we're have looking at the land to see who owned what. Yeah, we do have we do have uh, a few town owned town owned parcels at the end that are zoned industrial. Uh, they're just on the other side of the parking lot at the entrance. So anybody that didn't want to go past the food stands or anything, they wouldn't have to. They could walk the trail yeah. the other direction. Okay. Uh, nobody would have to cross it, but it's right there. Okay, perfect. And this one has a time from the timeline says by 2024, identify potential sites along existing or new bike trails that would be appropriate for small scale commercial development. I think this leads into those, the properties that are there and there could be some potential um, zoning changes. So this might be something that we'd want to start looking at now. We might not have to actually put it in action, but we might want to get more information from Chris and some others about any long-term changes. And I think Maria sure. can help in that. So those were the immediate highs. And then let me just review quickly. Um, the next three were flexible timelines, but they were um, high priorities. Um, we identified these as a high level of effort and a high return on investment, but 
One was a zoning overlay for the pharmaceutical, uh, zoning overlays, and one of the items were um, for the pharmaceutical life sciences, but this was about uh, having additional studies and funding to implement design standards. So again, very, very important, but uh, quite a bit of work. I think, I think maybe we can, um, we should probably talk when we discuss it with Maria. I don't know why SERPED's not on here, to be honest, as one of the partners. Um, but I think in our conversation with her about, you know, any hours that we might have to use that we talk about this, because I think that they, they would be instrumental in that part. Um, and then it was the sewer expansion um, was also flexible high attract businesses, which I think is kind of, I think it's active, but I think it's kind of secondary to having the business organization, because I think that can help, um, that can be a, a, a dependency. And then um, the next was medium effort and low return on investment was placemaking and wayfinding. And this we aligned to the business organizations as well as um, the neighborhood organization. So I think that's a um, one that's a little bit later um, based on a higher priority item. And then the last, last one was a town gown. And this was um, working with Wheaton College and, and some others to um, reinforce the benefits, the relationship benefits. Um, and that was medium effort and, and high, but had a uh, implementation and priority of flexible and low. So my my thought on this, um, I think our, our focus is on the first four that are identified as um, immediate and high priorities, but I'll ask you guys if, if you agree if that's our starting point. Uh, Again, that's the permitting processing guide, the village center, um, the business org, and then the rail trail. I'm, I'm more than a excited about the rail trail stuff and zoning stuff. Uh, I've already been working on it. I'm uh, preparing presentations. Uh, it could always improve and I, I could feel more confident in it, but uh, with input from everybody, that'll probably help settle any nerves. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm absolutely ready to start addressing the rail trail and, and zoning issues. Okay. And I'm looking at the timeline too, and the permitting one that says by 2022, and the the business organization says by 2022, and the rail trails by 2024. So I wonder, since the the permitting process and guide is is an easy effort, I wonder if that's kind of like our our first, because we could probably okay. have some success doing that pretty quickly, and then um, maybe tackle together the rail trail and the business organization, and put the village center as a fourth. Okay. You guys think that's, that's good. a good a good plan? And I, I think we can also, you know, we can certainly keep some of these other ones moving or at least mm -hmm. gathering information on some of these. I think like for example, the the Wheaton thing we were we were just gonna try to figure out, you know, who's our contact there, what's been done lately, et cetera. Um, Mike units yeah. might be able to add some commentary to that. But you know, that's the kind of thing that we can do you know, sort of informally as we move some of these other things, just kind of keep them moving. Mm -hmm. Even if it's incrementally, just keep them moving forward. Yeah. I think, I, Kevin, I you just went to their uh, concert that they just had, an orchestra, right? Uh, no, I did not go. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. They did, did have a concert. Um, I went to their winter festival. They had an ice carving. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was nice. Nice. How did you hear about that? I was just out driving with my son. Oh, and just stumbled upon it? <laughs> yeah, they had some stuff going around. They saw lights, so we stopped and parked. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, it's too bad that that wasn't, like, more broadly made public. Well, that's something we could talk about with them, I think, for sure, because yeah. they, they do put stuff on, like, on Facebook and social media, which is, I think, what Steve's referring to. I, I kind of just put, like, an ad out there that I saw, mm -hmm. um, just said, hey, you know, <laughs> if people in Norton want to go to something cool, this sounds like right. a great, would be a lot of fun. Um, but you know, where do they advertise other things? Where do they, you know, publicize events? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It'd sure. be nice to see that in the town calendar, right? Kind of see a one-stop shop type thing. Yep. Yeah. So and Kevin, you had, I had listed here too. You were going to follow up about who the select board representative was for this. For the, for, for Wheaton. Wheaton? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I got to, we got to ask units that I don't, I don't okay. think we have one. Okay. Did, did the board, did the select board have one when you were? 
on it. Yep. And it was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> I think it was Brad and then it was me. Um, or was it Mary? And well, then... we haven't, I can, all, I do know that we have not, we have not done anything since I've been on the select board since April. Okay. Um, so, um, so if it was you, then we have not, we have not <laughs> had anybody else um, be appointed. Yep. So we could certainly do that. Well, I remember, I remember having it, it was uh, midway through COVID when we weren't doing anything. So I, I'll openly admit that I, I think I engaged with um, the president maybe twice. And then I had some conversations with the, um, I can't remember his title, but with Zach Irish on mm -hmm. some of the student efforts and stuff. Um, but again, nothing, nothing that was formal. I didn't, you know, most of their meetings that they had were during the day and I was, I couldn't make them. Yeah. I've met the president a couple of times. Um, the, the new one, the new president. Yeah. Okay. But I haven't met just, just informally. Like I, I met her at the tri, the tri-county chamber once, and I met her during one of the parades as well, but mm -hmm. nothing formal. So, I mean, I think it absolutely makes sense to have a select board representative. Yeah. Um, sounds like you've just positioned yourself. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> no, no, actually, I'd be happy to, 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 to do something like that. So, um, so I can, I can bring it up. Um, unless there's someone that I don't know about who is, has already been designated, then we can, we can bring it up at the select board and, and nominate someone. Well, Mike just joined us. Mike, hi, how are you? And just in case I can't see him, but Mike, you're on mute. <laughs> hi, how are you? Good, Mike, how are you? Good. Sounds like you're driving. I am. Okay. Um, hey, we were, Mike, we were just going over a couple of the um, the items from the master plan that were assigned to the EDC. And one of the things on here is the town gown in respect to relationship with Wheaton. And we were wondering, do you know who the, who or if there is a current member of the select board that's um, a representative for Wheaton? I don't believe there is. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask to have it put on the agenda for one of our future meetings. And then we can, um, and then in the meantime, and then once that person is appointed, have them reach out to Wheaton. Sound okay, good? That sounds, yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Okay, so so just quickly to recap, I have, um, when we meet with Maria next, we'll, we'll talk about um, what we think are the order of priorities um, the permitting process and guide, because it's a, a, a fairly um, easy thing to execute. And then um, collectively, the rail trail um, efforts, as well as the Norton Organization of Businesses. And then um, third, the Village Center um, zoning updates. And then from that, I think there are a couple of specifically aligned with the, um, the business organizations, that there are a couple of things down below that are less uh, immediate in priority that will roll nicely into those that we'll be able to, to make some headway on. Okay, okay, so with that, Mike, um, please drive safely um, as, you're, as you're listening in. Um, Alyssa is on and she's ready to go. Um, prior to you arriving, I, I just gave a, a quick history of um, Alyssa's involvement previously and um, the information that she shared. And uh, with that, Alyssa, I will turn it over to you and we are looking forward to, uh, to your presentation here. Thank you. Oh, can you give me permission to share oh. the screen? Yes, I can. Wait a second. Okay, should be all set. It's, oh, here we go. So thank you, Madam Chair, for the introduction and um, hi to the other members of the EDC. Um, I'm proposing a cannabis dispensary tonight at 408 Old Colony Road, and I am the owner of Lucky Green Ladies. Um, so we'll be talking about a little bit of background about my company, um, our location, the zoning, floor plan, parking plan, um, some of the security measures, and then the benefits that we'll be bringing to the town. So we're a small locally owned business. I am a social equity participant, which means that I get certain benefits from uh, the Cannabis Control Commission, such as expedited licensure review, the ability to own a delivery business, and then discounts on licensing fees. 
as Renee mentioned, I did apply for uh, a retail store back in 2020, but unfortunately I was not selected. So that kind of um, made me pivot to do home delivery, which I um, have an HCA and a special permit at um, 394 Old Colony Road. Um, and that's going well. We're in our build out phase. We did hit some slowdowns, but uh, we're back on track and hoping to open up um, in the beginning of next year, probably uh, February or March. Um, so our proposed location is 408 Old Colony Road. It's the old Morse Insurance Agency building. Um, we do own this property. We closed on December 2nd. Um, and for us, a small mom and pop shop business, this is perfect for our needs. It's uh, 994 square feet. And uh, that dirt path on the left-hand side, that's also our land as well. And we'll be completely rehabbing the building and uh, redoing the parking lot as well. We are compliant with the current zoning bylaws. We fall in the marijuana overlay district. Um, in the green circle is my delivery location. And then um, to the left, right to the left of that um, circled in red is the proposed dispensary location. So they're extremely close to each other, which is great. Uh, we'll be open from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week, and then having employees at the facility uh, from 7 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Uh, we can do this type of business with three employees minimum, uh, but then during peak hours, such as lunchtime or, um, you know, after work between four and seven, and then on weekends, um, we'll have four to five employees. Uh, but there'll always be at least one bud tender, one security agent, and one manager, whether that's an assistant or, um, you know, a regular manager on site at all times. Here's our proposed floor plan. And then if you can see at the bottom, I wrote in um, Old Colony Road. So if you're following my mouse, right here on the right-hand side is where the customers will enter. Um, they'll walk in, they will um, be greeted by the security agent who's sitting in the vestibule and they'll get their ID checked. And if everything checks out, they'll be buzzed into the sales floor where they will walk down and go to the registers here. And then once they've made their purchases and they're ready, they're going and exiting right out of the store right here. Um, we have a pretty small back of house. Like I said, it's 994 square feet. Um, we have a small um, production slash receiving room. Um, although I don't expect to do much production there since we are getting our manufacturing license right down the street and we'll do all, most of our packaging there. I created this with the idea in mind that, um, you know, if anything were to happen to 394 or, you know, I sell the business or close it down for whatever reason that this business doesn't have to rely off of 394 and that it could be able to um, sustain itself. So we have a small vote room and then um, here's the door in the back where our employees will enter and where we will bring in our deliveries through. Here's our parking plan, which has 18 spots in total. This isn't 100% finalized yet because I've been, I'm still working very closely with Deputy Chief Robbins from the fire department and Nick Iafrades in regards to access of the emergency vehicles. I expect that uh, if the parking plan does change at all, those will be minor. And um, this is a pretty good idea of, of what our parking situation will be like. We also have an easement on parcel A um, on the left-hand side until 2027. Um, and if we, we have the ability to extend that, um, extend that easement if we need be, um, but we're, I'm trying to just see if now we could get away with not using it, but um, we do have that as an option if, if we need to. Our plan for secured receiving. So I met with uh, Chief Clark last week and uh, after we were talking about it and kind of put our heads together, we found that uh, the safest and the best solution for receiving product from our external suppliers would be at 394. And that's for a few reasons. One, there's no customers on site. Two, we have a bay where we can pull in the vehicle. And then um, we're also gonna be storing most of our product at 394 since our vault at 408 is pretty small. Um, so it just made a lot more sense to get all of our external deliveries there. And then that way we can completely control the deliveries that do happen to 408 uh, because it'll be our people that are delivering. So we'll be able to either 
you know, both 30 minutes or an hour before opening or um, delivered during off peak hours with the goal in mind of um, having the least amount of customers on site when these deliveries are happening. Cause you know, it is a very small space and we, and we don't have access to a bay to, to pull in the, the vehicles, but we'll have two delivery agents in the vehicle. One is staying in the vehicle all times. And then we'll have the dispensary agent that's opening the door, closing it, locking it behind them and um, assisting with carrying in the product. Our plans for maintaining a secure facility. So this is in compliance with exhibit A of the HCA. We'll have um, commercial grade camera systems, um, product and cash to be locked in the vault at all times. Our security systems monitored by the police department, our alarm systems monitored by a third party, um, commercial grade locks on all doors, a roof access deterrent, limited access doors and areas um, using like the key fob system. And then um, our rule of we, what we have at the uh, 394, and which is also a state law of no marijuana being consumed on site. And then our plan to prevent diversion to minors. So only individuals age 21 and older will be allowed access into the facility. We are checking the ID twice, once at the door at the secured vestibule area, and then again at the register. Um, we have education on our website about diversion um, that talks about safe transportation, storage, and consumption. Um, we're checking our inventory every other day, alternating employees, making sure that you know we have uh, multiple eyes on our inventory and then um, seeing what we have for inventory and putting that up against our seed to sale um, tracking system, which is called metric. Um, all of our products will be in childproof packaging and they won't, that packaging won't have any bright colors or cartoon characters or anything else that really appeal, appeals to minors. Uh, so for odor mitigation, uh, this is the same system that we have down at 394 and it's pretty much like an air scrubber. So um, every 10 minutes it sucks the air in and then that air goes through like a charcoal filter which neutralizes the air and then it pushes back out um, clean smelling air. So none of our neighbors or no one standing in the exterior of the facility will be able to smell anything. And then monetary benefits that Lucky Green Ladies will bring to Norton. So um, I, we haven't finished negotiating the HCA, but just off the top of my head, this is what's for sure, um, is the taxes. Norton's gonna get a 3% sales tax and we project our revenue to be three to 5 million. And um, this is the, the amount in the chart is what Norton would be receiving annually based off of those projections. And not included in this chart is a personal property tax. Uh, we plan to hire 50% of our staff from Norton um, and we're gonna be um, you know, improving our parcel and our building, um, which will bring some life back to Old Colony Road because uh, some of the, as you guys know, some of the buildings there are kind of falling apart a bit. So it's gonna, I'm really excited to at least revive my parcel. Um, so we'll be using the existing building, completely rehabbing it, putting in a new parking lot with stormwater management um, in addition to a new septic system. So uh, it's going to look really nice when it's all done. And um, finally, that we're going to provide safe access to quality products to Norton residents and anyone that's just traveling through. Um, all of our products undergo rigorous testing that tests for cannabinoid content and contaminants. So, um, you know, we're de we'll definitely be a safe outlet for, for residents and for others to, to purchase product. And I know that that was really brief, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Kevin, Steve, Mike, I'll open up to you guys first. Uh, well, thank you anyways for the presentation. Um, the facility at 394, is that done being constructed yet? No, we're about a month out on finishing construction on that. Okay, I had stopped by like two months ago what was under construction just to see what was going on. But, yes, I, I okay. remember they told me that you'd stop by. That was in the early stages. I think we had like just gotten started at that point. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, anybody else? I don't know. Yeah, Alyssa, I have um, Kevin, did you have a question? Any no, question? Okay. okay, or Mike? We'll give him a minute to go off mute. What was that? I, I just asked if you have any questions, Mike. 
did you say how many employees you were going to have? Yeah, so during off peak hours three and then during peak hours four to five. Okay. And um, you have, I know you've contacted the chief um, of police. Has he finished uh, reviewing your plans? Yes, he's finished reviewing my plans, but he asked if I could potentially make a, sh um, a fence out in the around the back door in the shape of an L. Um, I initially told him I didn't think that it was possible, but that I would check with my engineer. So I'm still waiting to hear back um, to see if that's possible because we're really tight on space. I'm like squeezing every single inch out of that parcel as possible for parking. So um, he said, you know, just let him know that would be great. But if not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Alyssa, is that fencing is that fencing attached to the building not not like to secure the the overall property like yeah was attached the to the building and just so that the car could pull in and then a door would be able to close behind it okay so just to enhance the security of of any mm -hmm. delivery that comes in okay can you go back to the um the the overall plan the exterior the parking yes please I just want, I was looking at something right before you, um, you flipped this. So the expectation is, um, and I, I don't know how like the, the frontage is right now. Is it, is it like this? I, I know that there's a drive on that, that left side when you're facing the building. Um, is it all open where people can drive anywhere and you're going to close off that, that center part? Um, so yeah, I should have mentioned like, that. Like this, We're this part right here, like, is this closed right now where there are only the two the two entrances and egress? Well, because the building, it's not closed. There's actually a parking spot in front of the building right now, but okay. you know, where my property line ends is pretty much Old Colony Road right there. Okay. So um, I think they just did that in like for turn radiuses, they drew that on. Um, okay, gotcha. But um, he wants that fence in the back where it's 22 feet. And mm -hmm. uh, we just have to see if it will fit because what, why this plan isn't a hundred percent in place yet is because um, I'm making sure we're, we're having issues with access for emergency vehicles. Like, so on this left side where it says 12 feet, we might have to eliminate one of these parking spots or move the sign. Um, Cause deputy chief Robbins said that he wants at least 20 feet um, for turning in access. And then he, he wants 14 feet um, along the side of the building. So on the parcel A side, you can see that there's only 12. Um, mm -hmm. But he said that he's going to bring the truck and then also bring someone else from the fire department and Nick, and they're going to do measurements and see if 12, they, we can get away with it. But if not, then um, I might have to start my conversations with parcel A guy. Okay. And, and that at that point, I don't know, what is that about nine, 10 feet, additional nine or 10 feet? A parcel A is an additional 10 feet. Okay. Is Thank parcel you. is parcel A guy the uh, car wash? Yes. Okay. At the car wash. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hey, Alyssa, do you have anything? I know you mentioned you were going to completely rehab the building. Um, I assume that was is part of the outside too. Do you have any sort of like rendition of what you expect it to look like from the road? No, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, are, can you show a picture of it right now? It's not, I mean, it's quite small, right? Sorry, I'm having you Very bounce. small. Okay. So um, that red door, it's where, and that's kind of a little porch area and the building indents a little bit. So we're going to close that off. And you mentioned frontage space and um, we yeah. kind of fall under that non-conforming bylaw where if I'm explaining that correctly where um, since we're an existing building we don't need to meet um, the frontage requirements as if it was a new build um, as long as we don't exceed 25 percent like adding on 25 percent so when we close that off I think we add like 10 square feet um, but that's not close to 25 percent and then we'll just close like make it so it's a flush wall and then move the door over on the, the right hand side and you can't see it in this picture, but also on the right-hand side, there's a, a ramp. Um, so that's getting completely removed as well because we're putting the ramp in the front of the building. Okay. 
and the um so from the diagram it's not like you're going to put grass in the front of this building like where the where the property meets the road right it's still going to no. be that that first part okay that's what i was yeah. wondering that's what i couldn't tell from the diagram yeah and um we're here's one view of it where we have the handicapped spot there and that's kind of perfect too because it's you know <laughs> the, the closest spot in the house um and next to the ramp and here's another view of it just that handicapped spot that goes right in front of it um but yeah nothing no grass or anything it'd just be that parking space okay thank you and um I'm just looking ahead one more. I think my only question was about the uh, the receiving, but I think you answered it with with that being kind of an open item with Chief Clark right now. Mm -hmm. um, so other than those issues that that you've encountered with the um, emergency access and the the potential for the fence in the back, those are the only outstanding items that you have from your initial conversations with the town. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and um. I'm sorry, Nick Iafrates has reviewed my, trying to go back to it, has reviewed my floor plan already. And he actually was suggested because before I had my exit door out where the security vestibule was, but after I had a meeting with him, um, Chris, the health agent and, um, and Deputy Chief Robbins, and he had suggested, because if I had the exit on the right-hand side in the back, then I would have needed another ramp for that. Um, so he suggested putting both doors right next to each other, the entry and the exit. So that way I only need one ramp. And that's kind of where the two windows are, right? I mean, not exactly, but like your, your door would be on the other side now. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. All and right, then the totally, only oh, totally on. random question. Is there is there storage in this building above? Is there like a ceiling in there or is it? So is there's it, an attic, but yeah, we're yeah. not allowed to put anything up there um, because it's not ADA compliant. And we if we were to put anything like business wise, even files up there, we'd need for it to be accessible for all of the employees. Um, and okay. we don't want to put like any type of elevator or anything. So sure. um, yeah. we're just not going to put anything up there. And I'm sure it'll probably get like closed off or something. Okay. There's a basement as well, um, which has, we have oil. So our tank is down there. Um, but it has to, the floor has to get completely ripped out because there's some beam, um, load bearing beams that are sagging a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so structure wise that, has to get replaced in the basement in the basement yeah between like if you're in the basement and looking up like the ceiling of the basement but then like the subfloor essentially mm. the beams that hold it up aren't really i mean it's it's just not up to code yeah do you know how long it's been has it been it's been vacant for a while right do you know how long it's been vacant <laughs> No, it hasn't been vacant for a while. Um, the insurance agency left on December 1st. Oh, wow. Yeah. And now they're in the same building as Boat City. Okay. They have an office there. Um, but, and this, there's nothing wrong with the septic. It works and everything. It's just a cesspool. So it would mm. automatically have failed Title V. Yeah. I just think it was kind of getting old for them and they didn't own the building. So they didn't want to, you know, put the money into it. And yeah. so they, so they moved. Um, it used to be a house actually in 1940. Holy um, but yeah, it's, I can't believe there's a basement. <laughs> I know when you said that, I was really surprised. <laughs> there is a basement. Yep. Wow. And our, it's such a small building that our oil tank is has to be like, I think, you know, usually they're like 275 or 250, but ours is um, 225 because it, nothing else would fit through the door. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very small in there, but it's a cute little property. And I'm, I'm really lucky that I stumbled upon this. I actually was door knocking for my delivery business looking for extra parking. And um, that's where I found it. And um, yeah. yeah, so it never been like listed online or anything. 
and I, and we didn't use any realtors. It was directly from, um, you know, the seller I bought it from. So, and he was a really nice guy. That process went really well. So I'm glad it all worked out. And so Alyssa, what, um, and maybe it's not a topic for tonight, but you were looking for additional parking spaces for your existing property. So you, I imagine you won't be able to have those spaces here, right? Because of the limitation in the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I would call it a temporary solution because, you know, obviously the delivery is going to open way before this will. Um, so I guess it's a temporary fix, but, you know, I'm still trying to get work out the parking lot with my landlord uh, situation. So hopefully that works out. Gotcha. And, and given this is um, the size of this is, is, I don't, I don't know if I'd call it significantly smaller, but it's quite smaller than, um, you know, the previous space you were looking at. What are you thinking in respect to like the amount of product that you're actually going to have um, from a, a timeline perspective in this building? Um, so probably I would say like three days of product max since we could go back and look at the um, floor plan. So here is where it says marijuana storage. That's our vault room. It's very small. And we, I think we, um, from the last time you've seen it, Renee, at the three, at 394, we made our vault even bigger because um, okay. we took out the room for the secured receiving, like the area where we were going to receive the product and weigh it all. And then um, we realized that we could do that in the vault room. Okay. So, so you just join um, the two together? Yeah. So it's big. It's like pretty much half of my facility is just the vault room. <clears throat> So we definitely have the space for it over there. Mm -hmm. And and do you have to um, like with this the the process to actually deliver product there? Um, so if you have like two to three days of product, and so you're you're only expecting a couple of days a week that you would have to transfer product from one place to another. Mm -hmm. um, is there some sort of like a random process that you go through to make sure, I know that you said you would, the expectation is to do it on off hours just because of um, the space limitations, but um, are you still looking to to do like a random process so that it's not something that others can, can track given the, mm -hmm. the short distance? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that just doing it on random days and, and, and random off peak hours. I mean, definitely, I don't want to do it on a Friday afternoon rush. Um, but I would just say that, you know, anytime that, you know, we've been seeing it, what's great is that, you know, I also, I'm going to be owning both businesses. So I'll know, you know, the sales times and, and what's off peak and, and, and busy hours. So um, yeah, definitely, we have to keep it random. It's, it's a requirement by the CCC. Mm -hmm. So I would just say like different days of the week and then you know maybe go through a cycle of um different off peak hours like some in the morning and some at night and then diff just different days gotcha thank you um any other questions from the group or mike i don't i don't have any any more okay and I did want to mention too, um, one of the changes that I have noted, um, Alyssa, I know that you you mentioned here the uh, the 3% the excise tax. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in some of the changes, the recent changes from the CCC that they've also, um, for social equity, um, there's an additional 1% of total sales revenue that comes back to the town. Um, and that's, I think, through the, the Department of Revenue. So it's it's not oh. the same the same stream, but um, so just, just the note to the group that it's, for all intents and purposes, 4%, I guess we'd say from total sales. I didn't know that. That is very cool. Just had one question. Go ahead, sure. Mike. Um, Alyssa, have you done a park test yet to see if it, if it will park there? Yes, we did a park test That's in the back corner of parcel B area, which is the area that's not paved yet. And um, we do have a deceptive design, but they didn't make it in H20, which mm -hmm. for anyone that doesn't know, an H20 is a certain type of septic system that you get so that you can drive on top of it since we're so limited with parking. Um, it's kind of our only option. So when they designed it, they didn't design an H20, but um, we do have the perk test done. And um, I, 
the person that I hired to do our site plan will also design our system. So um, yeah, we just got to iron out this parking plan first. Alyssa, how long do you think it'll be before the, your parking plan is solidified? Deputy Chief Robbins said that he'd either get back to me today or tomorrow, and that was last week. So, um, you know, I hopefully they're so nice. I love everybody at the town, and they're so willing to work with me too, which which has been great. So, hopefully, he'll get back to me sometime this week, and then we can, you know, decide what the best option would be. But I'd say no longer than two weeks. Um, we're close and they've come out to the site a few times to look at it. And, and then what about when you have a um, just a, a final answer on whether or not you can accommodate the fence? This sometime this week, I would say. So and I'm I apologize. I apologize, Alyssa, if I missed it somewhere. But do you have a uh, you have a, a opening date in mind? Yeah, I no, you haven't missed it. I didn't bring that up. I'm and I wanted to talk about that because in earlier, I think before the meeting started, we were talking about um, you know timelines for getting on the agenda. So I would say that as once I have the HCA, um, I would say like a year and a quarter. I expect it to go a lot smoother than my delivery went. And I also didn't know if I like, if the state was gonna help like the state in their process or if I was gonna get approved or I kind of sat around while I was waiting for my provisional license for two months doing nothing. Um, but this time I expect to, like I'm already getting my building plans worked on and um, in regards to like the MEP engineer and stuff and my, tra I already hired someone for the traffic study. Like I have like, you know, numbers in my contacts, I should say. So um, it should just be a lot smoother process, which I'm really looking forward to because it's it definitely been a learning experience for the delivery. But um, so, yeah, I, I expect it to go a lot smoother. So was there anything that came up in the delivery process from um, the special permitting or, or site plan uh, perspective that like you've learned from that you'll you'll use here? Yeah, so um, well, I had to one get the site plan done. So, um, you know, just even in regards to hiring someone like that's a step, you know, you want to get like different estimates and stuff. And then it's same thing with the traffic study. I would say for me that the uh, traffic study was the most that I learned from because um, when they do the traffic study, they're looking at, um, and it's different the way that they do the traffic study for a retail establishment versus the delivery. But for the delivery, what really, I guess, kind of like stumped me was that um, I thought that I had enough parking, but then they were looking at shift changes. They like do their parking analysis based off of the worst case scenario. So they're like, oh, if all of your employees are changing their shifts at the same time and your supplier is coming um, to the facility and all of your delivery vehicles are parked outside, that's how many parking spaces you're required to have. And, um, you know, realistically, I'm sure that would never happen. Um, but that's the, you know, that's how they determine that number. And, you know, that's what the planning board is, you know, making their decision on parking from. So um, having that in mind this year, um, you know, it has it's definitely been helpful. And now that I do have that contact, I was able to send my parking uh, or the traffic engineer this parking plan and see, seeing if I had enough parking spaces for my use in the square footage. And I do. So, um, you know, that was, you know, a weight lifted off my shoulders, I guess, because I now I know like what they're looking for. And um, but it'll be different, a little bit different with this one, because um, with, with this one, like I'm, I'm going to need a new parking lot and I'm going to need storm water and um, the, a new septic. And at the other location, I didn't need that. It was a lot of existing conditions for remaining the same. So it wasn't as complex. Yeah, was it? Did you account for that in your timeline, like engaging with some of the other groups for that, mm -hmm. as part of the year and a quarter? I'm already engaging with them on that, like with Chris, mm -hmm. for example, and the septic, and then um, the conservation commission for stormwater. Um, I've already had a conversation with them, and 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 Nick as well with the parking lot design. So everyone's That's been great. so helpful. 
and I'm glad yeah. that you know I'm I know what I'm facing so I know the people to see and what questions to ask I guess so it's just going a lot smoother good that's good to hear thanks for that feedback certainly um any any other questions and Maggie feel free if you have a question too you can uh you can certainly talk as well no thank you uh that was really good um you know, I would say that there's a well-rounded understanding of the regulations and all that stuff. So I, I liked it. I don't have any questions. Thanks. Thank you. Kevin or Steve or Mike, anything else? No, I'm good. Not a question, but a comment. I, I actually just want to say, like, thank you for uh, taking the opportunity to renovate <laughs> an old structure and, uh, you know, take care of a property that's sort of falling apart. Not that it's a bad building, but, you know, you're going to turn it into something a little bit more. And I, uh, I like the idea that it's a small building. It's, it's a cute facility, so to say. It's, it's not oh, overimposing agree. or offensive. So that, that's pretty cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. just happy I... that you're, you're sticking with Norton. <laughs> yeah. Fin finally, some things, uh, you know, make it. I love this it. This is, a, I mean, the fact that you just like knocked on the door for a different purpose, right? Like it's. it's... <laughs> Alyssa, tell us the truth. You want to create like a, like a, like a, a marijuana compound. <laughs> I'll, I'm, taking, I'm taking over old colony. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's good. It's so nice that they're so nice, like close to each other. Even now, like, you know, if I have to meet people at four, because I'm pretty much always Steve, you caught me at, you know, a weird time or it wasn't, it was rare. I'm always at 394, like all day. It's just like three places that I'll be, four places, the fire department, the town hall, 394 or 408. I'm there all day. So it's really convenient um, being at 394, even now, like, you know, the business is not even open because I have to just run down the street to meet somebody or do like, you know, something like that. It's just like so convenient. I can walk there. Um, so I, I was going to, I was going to ask, is there a sidewalk for you to no. walk safely back and forth? There's no sidewalk. I think the sidewalk's on the other side of the street, but there's kind of like where the road ends, like, I would say like a little like gravel, like path. And it's not like dangerous or anything, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, no sidewalk. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Alyssa, for sharing that with us. And let me just ask a group. Um, so Kevin and Steve, this is, you know, up to you. Um, you know, typically what we do is, is we just take a vote within the EDC to recommend um, to the select board. I know that Alyssa has a couple items outstanding, the, the parking plan and um, and the, uh, the fencing. So, you know, I'll, I'll defer to you guys if you would prefer to vote on this at our next meeting when Alyssa has more concrete updates or um, if you're comfortable voting with it now, assuming that she complies with, you know, whatever um, is required by, by the town. But uh, uh, to I'm, I'm comfortable. I, the, the issues seem very minor and seem adjustable. They don't seem like they're gonna get in the way of anything else. So yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with the business proposal. Same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me just one second here. So Alyssa, um, well, I'll ask for a motion here to vote. Um, and then what I would just ask you is if anything changes or you run into any specific issues where something has to change in your plan, if you just reach out to me and we'll get you back on the agenda quickly. Um, if it's, if it's required, um, And this is more a formality. Um, Are you writing up a masterpiece? Um, no, I was writing. Um, I was I was writing the just listing out, trying to think of how to word to recommend a select board based on uh, meeting the conditions of the town, like meeting any new conditions of the town. I was just trying to get some decent wording, <laughs> but I can write a novel if you want to wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the chair will entertain a motion um, to recommend Lucky Green Ladies um, retail establishment as presented today to the select board um, based upon 
compliance with uh, Lucky Green Ladies to meet any new conditions of the town for the two open items regarding the parking plan um, and the potential fencing in the rear of the building. So moved. I need a second. Second. Okay, and roll call vote, Kevin? Yes. Steve? Steve? Yes. And I am also a yes. Thank you, gentlemen. And Alyssa, thank you so much. Like I said, I'm I'm really happy that uh, you have an opportunity to move forward with this. And, you know, it's we're there are many people um, in your corner looking for your, you know, backing you and, and your success. And we can't wait to see you. You open the first one and then get this underway, too. Thank you so much, Renee. And I did have a question for you, if if that's OK. Sure, of course. So um, what we're kind of talking about in the beginning of the meeting about getting on the agenda for the select board, um, do I need to have these issues ironed out first? Like what would what would you say the next steps are for me in regards to the to the retail store? Um, I think I think it would be uh, more beneficial for you to have these ironed out um, because the board may have some additional questions. So at least you can you can provide them with um, the resolution to these issues. Um, and then for timing, as I mentioned, Mike and I talked about the 28th for the amendment. Um, I think you're probably looking into the new year, given that um, and and Mike and Kevin, please weigh in here. But I know in years past especially the last meeting of the year, you try to keep it short and on target to things that um, are priority and need to be approved before the end of the year, specifically licenses. So I think Alyssa, realistically, you're looking at sometime in January, assuming that all of these other items um, are there. And I would just, um, I mean, I didn't see any, any outstanding questions for you to follow up on, but certainly like if you have an idea, I, I do think the exterior rendition is really nice um, for the board to see so that there's, you know, a, a visual of, of what will be. I mean, I think we all we all do understand that, you know, you're going to rehab it. It's going to look much better than it is. But if there's anything that you can provide, I think that that would be helpful. You got it. And 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 Mike, is there, would you add anything to that? Um, <clears throat> Alyssa, I just wanted to say I'll talk to Nick and Deputy Robbins tomorrow and see if they can get things ironed out this week. Oh, that, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, just to further Renee's point, it would just save you from having to come back twice, mm -hmm. right, or whatever, however many times, just be one fewer time if that, if those couple of outstanding items are resolved. Sure. So that's all. And I, I would agree that it's probably, probably look, we're looking at one of the two meetings in January. Awesome. Yeah, that, wor that works great and definitely gives me time to, to figure out those two issues. Perfect. Well, excellent. Well, Alyssa, thank you again so much. If you need anything in the interim, feel free to ping me. Um, if you know, if we need to uh, spin up a meeting for anything, we can do that too. But I'm certainly um, here to support in any way I can. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, thank Alyssa. You. Thank you. Okay. Have, Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Or if you're staying on, stay on. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> <coughs> okay um let's see going back so the only i mean we covered uh guys the uh the planning updates for the master plan stuff i don't know if we want to spend any more time going into detail with that um we start what time is it it's 8 15 we can certainly do that or we can um we could do that we could review the one um take five minutes to review the one meeting minutes and approve that or we can uh we can end here and have a very early meeting well, let's let's do the meeting minutes. Does Steve have them? <laughs> yeah, because just to yeah. make the list shorter. Yeah, I sent them out in the email. It should have been um, the first email that I sent that had the the June <coughs> the June minutes. Let me let me look at the time and date. And hey, yeah. Mike, I I know you're traveling. Um, certainly, if if you have anything and you want to stay on for any of the planning items, we're we're happy to review them um, with you or have any further discussion. But um, also happy for you to drop. I know it's been a long day for you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, bye Mike. Have a good one. Take care. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. So we're talking about the September 10th minutes? Yes. <laughs> I'm reading it now. It's not long. No. Okay. Take your time.
Okay. Approve. <laughs> All right. I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for sep is it September? Yes, September 10th, 2020 of the Economic Development Commission for the Town of Norton. So moving. And how about it? How about a second, Steve? Oh, second. Okay. Perfect. Now do roll call, Kevin. Hold on. The dog. The dog's getting its opinion in. Um. Okay. Yes. Steve. Yes. I too am a yes. Awesome. So we got four of those off our list. Excellent. Um. Did you guys want to do any deeper dive on the master plan, or you want to call it a night? I'm going to suggest we do that when we have Julie. Okay. Okay, cool. But, you know, if you guys wanted, if you both of you want to plow ahead, that's fine too. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I have a little bit of the rail trail on my screen if you don't mind sharing it, uh, but I'm more than happy to wait and talk about it more in depth at another time or, or whatever. It's not a, not, it's not uh, crucial tonight, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, up to you guys I mean, if you guys want to see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to see what you're doing, Steve. I, I agree too. I, I think like from an action plan perspective that, you know, it, it'd probably be great to have Julie here. Um, Cause I think sure. that she'll, she'll formalize us a little bit better than I will. Um, and then additionally too, I think, you know, what we talked about last time was let's just pick priorities before we meet with Maria. Right. So okay. that, that we align with her. So I think that's fine. But yeah, if you want to take a couple of minutes, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what you've been doing. Sure. Why not? <clears throat> so let's see how it share the screen or not. Everybody can see the Google? Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So I kind of, there's the rail trailing green, obviously. Uh, the shading around the outside is all the parcels that seem to be connected either immediately or because they're uh, conservation land they've got trails running through them uh the trails off to the side uh there's bridge street and that connects through the back to the baseball field by lg norse if you could connect those that forms a, a loop between there uh if we could get some connections through town land be between these parcels, we can connect these major uh, trail networks. This goes behind Wheaton College. This is the Woodwood Forest. And then that would link up the whole system all and the way Steve, down. Are, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> sure. Um, are these, so the, yeah. what I'm looking at here, the green, they're existing trails, just like walking paths, right? It's not something that's paved. Right, existing walking trails. Okay. Uh, the yellow is, more of like a trail proposal. Okay. The connections the that would have to be. Right. Okay. Uh, and then and that would what kind is... of expand the whole network. Uh, this one leads right to Wheaton College. Uh, so that might be a good connection. Other than that, Elm Street through the center of town seems to be the, the preferable option for bike traffic here. Uh, it just forms a great connection between all of it. Uh, that's the Elm Street property. If they were to develop a bike pack, bike path in the back, that could connect the entire Johnson and Heinrich Woods. Uh, in the master plan, one of the proposals was to connect the town land across uh, Wampum as an access point because the trails go back here. Uh, there used to be a bridge years ago, but so that's kind of what I've been focused on. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to get the, for a yeah, I was going to say, I'm trying just to get the bearings of where, um, that's the entire line from in Norton, the left to the right. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> it looks so small when we look at it like this. <laughs> it does. Hmm. Uh, I added some on-road connections that might be uh, additional. Some of them follow what was already suggested. Uh, in the master plan. 
some of them are just kind of my own thoughts. So I, uh, that would that would definitely be helpful from perspective of where could we put some sort of businesses on the trail, right? Yeah. Because they need access in that's not the trail itself. That actually might be the a good starting the point. VCC. What about some of those other areas? Um, <coughs> that's Village Commercial. Our commercial districts, our industrial zones. Did, did you did you separate um the town owned stuff? I have not separated out the town owned parcels yet. Okay. But most of that's on the right side, correct? By the um uh, facility. I can't right, right. Yeah. This is uh this is some Mansfield property. Okay. This is uh this is town land in here. Uh it's not directly connected to the trail, but we should probably make a connection through here to link everything up. So that's Pine Street. Right. Do we know where that new development was proposed? Um, Does anyone? I'm not familiar with it at all. I am not very familiar with it. I, yeah, I'm not going to, I would say somewhere in here, but let me, uh, are you seeing the rest of my screen when I click over? No. Okay. Okay. Just one. Okay. I was gonna switch over to Mac map but I don't I don't have it marked. That's okay. And then Steve, do we have from um this we we I mean we can talk about this next meeting, but it would be nice to meet with the um alternative transportation commission, right? And just have some yeah, discussion on what their plans are. Yeah. Um uh, if we can't make a dual meeting, I don't mind trying to attend one of theirs and seeing what they're up to. Um, I don't know who, I don't know who's representing, um, who's on, I don't even know who's on that now. Sandy used to be on it. She was on the EDC, right. but when she went on FinCom, she had to resign from both. Okay. Any, anyone know? I'm, I'm checking right now. Okay. I was about to do it too. Thank you, Kev. Um, can, Maybe uh, according to the website, it's Karen Kenter Potty. Um, Bayetta Schmid, Linda Collette, Scott Holman, and Kathleen Ebert Zawaski. Okay. I'll reach out and uh, I'll, I'll try to attend one of their next meetings. Yeah, or Steve, if you can just shoot the, um, if, if their contact information, maybe shoot them an email. Sure. You know, maybe they have one member that would be able to join us or we could, if they have a scheduled meeting, we could pop in. Okay. Yeah, it'd be, sounds nice, good to it'd be nice to have um, some open discussion. I wonder if they've, I don't know how much Maria has been um, up to speed on this too. So it'd be nice to, to get sure. her, um, her perspective as well. Okay. <clears throat> but just, and, and just in reference, like looking at this, like I said, I think it's incredibly helpful and thank you for doing this to see like yeah. the, the driving paths in, because that's going to help with uh, any sort of like the the description of um you know helping local businesses capitalize on the on those those recreation and the natural areas um sure it makes it uh, makes that elm street property a little bit more uh interesting doesn't it it really does because it's how how close it is to the path and if i'm reading this right there's some there's some potential linkage there to the bike path uh, to the rail trail sorry that that well, uh that's Even if it didn't link by trail, Cross Street itself goes right up, which is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Is that residential right there, Cross Street? That is, right? Because that's Arrowhead? Yeah. Yeah, it's all residential in here. Yep. Okay. If it's not marked on here, it's residential. What's the yellow again? Commercial or village? Village commercial. commercial. So there's a bit of village commercial. Where is that? Um is that one? That's the old train station. Oh, 123. Okay. Oh, right. That came up in a meeting about that property. Is that occupied right now? Yes. It's um a landscaping supply company. Oh, right, right. We I think we got our mulch from there last year. I should know that. Oh, is that is that plantation products? Yeah, I think so. Is that that's their name. 
Yeah. Oh, is Plantation oh, Products is down on, no, they're down in the industrial park down here. Oh, right. No, they're, yeah, right. They're <laughs> towards Thorn. Yeah, my bad. My bad. Huh. I'm not yeah. great with names. I, I never remember those. I uh, describe what's around them. One more thing. Uh, you know, we, we, I'm sure there'll be plenty of opinions once somebody watches this video, but eventually someday Norton might want to uh, have an MBTA line again. <laughs> and uh, if we were to eventually, 50 or 100 years down the line, develop an MBTA district, this is where it would be marked on the map. That's the community that's within the, the distance from the train tracks that could develop into uh, multifamily housing in enough of a range that would uh, pass as a MBTA district. What color is that? That is uh, the lighter purple, the more pinkish purple. Okay, the gotcha. Fuchsia. Yeah, that, that one right there. Uh, huh. the, the actual line is right there. Yeah. But you know, I kind of cut it out to the more appropriate properties. Mm -hmm. This itself, I think, is prime. That's the Tweeve facility. If that could get re redeveloped, that is <clears throat> the perfect spot. Hmm. And we could connect it to the trails. <laughs> Interesting. This is great, Steve. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. Really it's cool. great having that visual. Yeah. Yeah. Because it really, to Kevin's point, it puts it in perspective of how close it is to many, many things that you just, you don't notice. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. All right, is all, uh, everybody set with the screen or? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> okay, great, awesome. Steve. Thank you so much. Sure. Is that accessible through a link? Uh, no, I could copy the files uh, from the Google Earth itself and I could pass them over to you and then you could install it on your own Google Earth. Oh, that but. sounds confusing to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy just <laughs> looking at your screen then, <laughs> okay, taking cool. a snapshot if I need to. I could make it into a PDF or something. <laughs> I think down the road that would be helpful. Yeah, once we, um, you know, once we kind of solidify and, and identify what some of those action items are for us. Renee, so, he uh, could do paper copies. I'm sure if that would help, would that be helpful? Uh, don't even get well? don't all even black there. and white. Don't even go there. <laughs> I just when you say install an app, install files. <laughs> I know I have Google Earth. A hand drawn map, cross patch, and stippling. Yeah. 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 Are as you long a as Luddite? stickies all over it? Right. Are you a, a Luddite? Is that the word? A Luddite? A Luddite? Uh -huh. Afraid of technology. Yeah. A Luddite. Oh gosh, no, no, no. I'm afraid. <laughs> like, like I said, I have Google Earth installed, but ever since it installed, I'm having problems. So then uh, installing files on top of that is concerning. Fair enough. No, I love technology, and I, I am not a fan of papers, um, except for stickies. Anything that self adheres that I can put. If you saw my monitors and my desk right now, my walls. Okay. You'd realize I should have stock. <laughs> and some some notes I have, I don't even know what they mean anymore. I even have like stickies on notes, which is always fun. I okay, got anyway. a notepad, that's it. You probably uh, have 3M it. stock somewhere in your, in your portfolio somewhere. Yeah, I should actually look <laughs> and up it a little bit. Um. Cool. Well, thank you, Steve, for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's great. I think um, I think we'll have some good discussion next time with Maria. And awesome. um, like I said, I'll, I'll connect um, separately and see from a perspective of how we want to have that meeting if we want to do <coughs> virtual or hybrid. Um, that next meeting is scheduled for January 9th. So we have, I say we have some time, right? I, I still can't believe that like the end of the year is right around the corner. Yeah, my uh, my son's birthday is on the eighth, so it'll be uh, that'll be the next event. Oh, that's nice. How old? Yeah, five. Oh. So big day. Yeah, that is. He wants to go to Boston. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. And so we'll the coldness of January. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Does he want to go on the train? Does he want to take the train? To he the loves town? the train. Yeah. 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 So. That's, That's the big thing. We usually stop uh, each day 
uh, by his mother's work to go see the train go by. She works near the train. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Has he been on the subway too? No, not yet. That's I remember that age. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Did you... Yeah. Taking my the kids, kids around, my... they think everything's awesome. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. No. Nothing's awesome. <laughs> and especially, especially you, right, Kevin? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm the, the least parents awesome. Now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Negative awesome. Hey, as long as you aspire to be the best, no matter which side of the scale you're on, I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, cool. Well, hey, um, I think we can uh, look here to a, adjourn. Um, let me just ask before I move on. So I have next for the next meeting, um, definitely a discussion with Maria if she is still available. Um, we will keep the uh, business updates and master plan action items on there. Um, is there, I, I do have the mobile food vent vendors on here, but I'm thinking um, with Maria coming, probably keep other guests to the next meeting. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Okay. Hey, Steve, you had sent something on um, Canna, right? Did you talk to Andre about coming to a meeting? Was that oh. one of the agenda? Oh, yeah. He said, you, he said after there? the holidays that, yeah, after okay. the holidays, you'd like to have a sit down meeting with us. That'd be, that'd be cool. Okay. Uh, just wait for that. And I'll, I'll meet with him again sometime and uh, ask when he feels more comfortable and more of a solid date. Okay. Maybe we can target like the second meeting in January, the first in February for him. Okay. Cool. Um, just keep me posted. And then um, I think the next meeting too, I think we'll have time. And I think that this will work with our discussion with Maria to, to put the uh, planning update so we could just talk about the um, local business outreach, specifically like the phase one that we identified to look at the first 50 businesses to engage with. Mm -hmm. I think that she'll, she'll be able to provide some insight there on um, some best practices. Um, okay, sounds good. And, and then otherwise we can table. So just looking at that, Kevin, I think let's, let's table Tritown. That's fine. I can, I can do that. I can do that on my sure. own too. And and just get some information when I yeah. get it. So I don't think well, that. Yeah, and 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 that's all it is is the update. I just didn't yeah. want to lose lose sight of it. But um, yeah. don't feel compelled to try to get that, especially with the holidays in between. Because yeah, be maybe hard. I'll maybe I'll wait till after the first of the year and go from there. Okay, that sounds good. Ooh. Maggie, were you raising your hand? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wiggle worm over here behind me. <laughs> gotcha. um, I did have a question though. Sure. Um, has any, uh, is there still a seat open? Oh, there is. Okay. I saw, I figured <laughs> it to the end of the year and if no one else joins, I will send you an email to join. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that sounds great. All right. That's we'll a wonderful that. holiday present to the EDC <laughs> in the town of Norton. Cool. cool. <laughs> that would be great. All right. Cool. Okay. That's perfect. It. It needs to be a really long email and emotional. Yeah. Oh, no. One line. One line, please. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep you busy in other ways. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> okay. So with that, we'll end on a good note. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn at 8.34 p.m. So moved. So uh, seconded. Okay. And roll call vote, Kevin? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I too vote yes. So thank you folks. Appreciate um, you joining tonight and uh, doing it virtually. I think this, um, we haven't done virtual in a while. So it's, no. it's different, <laughs> but it's good seeing you. Um, everybody, I hope you have a healthy and happy and safe holiday season, um, no matter what you celebrate. Um, but I know at least we will all be celebrating the new year. So that's, mm -hmm. that's ringing 2023 with a bang and uh, hope for Less, less flu, less COVID, less RSV, less everything, and more friends and family and happiness. Perfectly okay. said. Sounds good. Perfectly Have a great yeah. holiday. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.